besides just the bus being a structure that we could convert into a glamping Airbnb, there are a lot more questions and situations that we've recently learned about that come into play on our decision as to whether or not to take this on right now. We're Brittany and Drew, two hopeful adventurers who got married, moved into a van, and have been chasing adventures all around the globe ever since, and are now searching for a place to call home somewhere soon. Subscribe and join the ride. <sighs> Welcome back, adventure lovers. In our last episode, we showed you around Moab, Utah, looking at five different properties and going to pick up a truck for Josh, the guy who reached out to us to possibly convert the structure, which we will be revealing at the end of this episode, into a glamping Airbnb project that you all could experience. But before we go there, where things are bound to get hot, it's beginning to look a lot like January, where we have a very exciting reunion with some friends who you might recognize. Oh, Frank gives kisses. Where are we? What month is this? Good morning. You see that? That's snow. Snow. I can't believe it. Seeing snow this time of year is not anything that we're used to. Although we did see snow in Utah once during January. <laughs> this is so crazy. So apparently snow this time of year here isn't so unheard of, but Drew and I left the warm little nook of Moab behind so that we could catch some flights out of Salt Lake City. He spent some time kite surfing with his family and friends in North Carolina, and he also checked up on the business that he remotely manages in Michigan, while I spent some time with my childhood best friends in Napa for one of their bachelorette parties. I hadn't seen my girls in nearly four years, so it was really nice to be around some feminine energy. But I did miss Drew, and we're happy to be back together. You know, as my nan always says, time apart makes the heart grow fonder. It does. It's true. And, well, right now we've driven up the mountains to Park City to see some friends that we haven't seen in a while. You guys all know Trent and Allie. They just got a table at the restaurant. We're going to go in and enjoy our time. <laughs> it's cold out here. I need a jacket. Snowball fight. Snowball. It's perfect packing snow. Ah. Oh. Shoot. Camera's all wet. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> camera on camera right now. Oh my gosh, it's so nice to meet you. Oh, such a cutie vibe. We've had so many things and we've seen you so many. <laughs> I know. Oh, this is your kid, not our kid. <laughs> you can borrow him. Be, care, be careful. He fits so nice. Oh, he's so sweet. Oh, 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 they can babysit anytime. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> We're looking for a baby. Oh, look, look at that smile. <laughs> Hi, Bubba. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. is like the best because okay. when you're going to make We're a debating a camera yeah. upgrade. Zooming into 70 gives you like time. that. Ah, oh, that was wonderful to meet with them. That was so nice. Oh, there were so many things that we just had to catch up on. And now we're going to get to go see their house. Yeah. And I... so are you guys. <laughs> so let's hit the road. Follow that ram. Well, that was a short ride. <laughs> Gas stop. Gas stop. I wanna say that one of the things that has always impressed me and intrigued and inspired me about Trent and Allie is the fact that they are such hard workers. And not, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I planned poorly. I didn't realize we needed gas. We don't mind at all. <laughs> she was just talking about how hard of workers you guys are posting yeah. twice a week. So. I was literally just like bragging and loving on you guys. So. <laughs> oh, okay. thank you. All right, where was I? Just gushing about Trent and Allie is... <laughs> you creeped up on the window? Yeah. But anyway, they are extremely hard workers. And on top of that, they have a baby. It's just a testament to when you want to get certain things done, you can find the time. You can make the time to do everything and more. Right? Absolutely. 
like preparing delicious and nutritious meals thanks to ButcherBox, the sponsor of today's episode, who always delivers the highest quality, always fresh meats straight to your front door, ultimately giving you more time to enjoy amazing meals together. You guys know that I don't eat a lot of meat, but I did marry somebody who does, and it's very important to the both of us that we source from a company who chooses better. Better care and comfort for the animals, better living wages for the farmers and fishermen who put the time and effort into raising the bar and who meet the highest standards for quality. Drew and I cook nearly every single meal, and ButcherBox offers unbeatable value. They also have flexible box options and delivery frequencies, allowing you to customize your orders to fit your needs, and you can cancel at any time with no penalty. So use our link below to sign up, and new members can receive a free grilling bundle. I'm excited about this meat, and I'm excited for you guys to try it out as well. They're always running different promos, so if you miss out on this deal, don't worry. Be sure to check out our link below and find out what it is now. It's delicious. Where were we? As we drive higher and higher up, it's crazy to me to see the snow get thicker on the branches of the trees. Being a native-born Floridian, this is still, whoa, on washboard roads. <laughs> but this is still one of the single digit times that I've seen snow, probably. So it's, it's always, it's always very magical to me. Uh... <laughs> Sorry about the audio. <laughs> this is the longest dirt road we've been on since we were in Baja. I know, but it's gorgeous. It is so beautiful blowing my mind right now. I can't believe that there's snow right now. <laughs> Fresh snow. Fresh pow. Pow pow. <laughs> it's a winter wonderland. We have arrived. Do you notice these huge white markers along the driveway? These are snow markers. Oh my god. <laughs> You are really testing my driving skills there. I can feel the back like sliding around a little bit. Just want you guys to see and meet Terry. This is the little trailer that they lived in when they were first building this house before there was anything else here. For those of you who don't know, after van lifing all the way down to Patagonia, these two made it back to Utah where they spent the entirety of the pandemic building out their first home that we're about to get a little tour of. Let's go inside. So if you guys haven't already subscribed to Trent and Allie's amazing channel where they share travel, building things, cute babies and dogs, then definitely be sure to do so. We love these guys. So I have a question for you. What's up? Do you have any advice for us? Not that we're building out a home, but At it's- At least yet. Yeah. yeah. One day. We haven't built anything other than this van. <laughs> I would say, um... Sleep on Sundays? <laughs> Sleep on Sundays. <laughs> I would say, like, have other people that are either professionals or have some experience that you can, like, bounce ideas off of and get advice Ooh. from and things like that. Like, okay. I had a general contractor that Hi, whenever Frank. I had questions or issues... Frank, off! Oh, he has muddy feet. Frank! Frank. So cute! Uh, that I, I had, like, a general contractor that I could ask questions. Like, when I would get to a point, I'd be like, hey, we're framing up this right here, and, like, I'm confused about this part. What should I do? Instead of, like, trying to find information online or trying to just wing it, like, right. I had somebody that was a veteran that I could Smart. bounce ideas off of, so. I love it. A lot of elbow guys, grease and a lot of muscle. <laughs> and you guys can call me because I'm, like, a seasoned yeah. veteran. Oh, oh perfect. <laughs> we need one of those in our wood, actually. It was, like, 21 degrees this morning. So deep that the tractor can barely gosh. snow blow it. Oh my Crazy. gosh. I like the one time Frank only wanted to go four feet out the door and put it in. Yeah. A kitchen with counters you can actually leave things on, and the most beautiful coffee maker we ever did see. A place to do laundry and shelving for plants, and reminders that the now is the only place we need to be. We are so grateful for all that van life has taught us for the friends we have made, and for the joy we find in the simplest of comforts, like a little bit more space and the endless wonder of a good view. But it's all about taking one thoughtful step at a time. And after eight years in a van, it's also all about the showers, hot showers. Oh, the shower. Yeah, no, that was like the one thing. It was like, I want a big shower. Oh, the flooring is heated. I yeah. know. 
getting to see their beautiful little home definitely opened our eyes to a whole new world of possibilities. Hey. Hey. This is just like so hey. oh, really? oh, Frank. Oh, yeah. Frank gives kisses. Here we go. Bye. We had a wonderful Bye. time. We go back into the snow. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy the snow. Till next time. Till next time. Adios. Yeah. Ah, uh, what a great time with friends. We're being whisked away by the snow flurries after a little magical escape into their cabin. I'm so impressed with the work that they've done. Me too. It's really special and cozy in there. It's a little muddy right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the snow flurries are literally flying into my eyes. Can you yeah, guys see cold. this? Can you see the snow? It's definitely not snowing in Moab right now. It's about 30 degrees warmer where we're going next. Except where we're going next is to the tire shop because remember how we got new tires for Spirit here? Well, that was in California. And for whatever reason, the valve stems where they put air to inflate the tires, those are loose. And so we've been losing air and we've had to refill our tires with air about every 10 days or so, which is not ideal. So right now we're going to get new valve stems. And then after that, we're going to Moab. And guess what? Hop in. And that's when you guys are gonna get to see the bus. Bye. Adios. I look forward to seeing them again very soon. It was very fun to share them with you all too. We hadn't seen them since, yeah, 2020. 2020. We just arrived to the tire shop. And before we get our actual valve stem extensions fixed here. I want to show you how bad this is actually leaking on the dually. This is a driver side outside wheel. I can press the valve and it just goes every time I press it. It's leaking really, really bad. So on the opposite passenger side of the van, it happens to be the inside wheel of the duallys. And we were told by a lot of you that our wheels touching together of the outer and inner dually is a really bad thing because the friction causes heat, which causes the sidewalls of the tire to basically leading to a major flat or issue along the highway or any road we're driving down. The new one. So we just were told that basically the old valve stem had a bad gasket or seal around it. When they put on our new tires, I think they were rushing a little bit at that shop that we were in Southern California, which is a big bummer. Luckily this shop here in Utah has the new ones available, the extensions that will bend around our rim. We can get this replaced and be on our way. How's your shower, babe? Oh, it feels great. This is what it looks like in there, everyone. <laughs> Hope you're only pointing that camera upward. Yep, don't worry. No sensor bar needed. What are you in the mood for? Can I say pizza? <laughs> Lobster mac and cheese? Ooh la la. Ooh. <laughs> don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. I know I'm lucky. As you can see, we decided on... Pizza night! <laughs> it's always a winner. And now, it's finally time to take you back to Moab with us so we can share with you the project that we've been building up to in the past few episodes. We don't know too many details about the original owner of the bus other than the fact that he passed away. And so the property where the bus is located is looking to be sold. And Josh was given the opportunity to buy the bus and thus move it to its new home where someone, or we, could help him convert it into an Airbnb. Check this out. What is that? Right inside of this box lives the vintage bus slash Airbnb glamping situation that we may or may not be converting right now. But okay, we have updates on that, but we need to show you this bus. It's pretty cool. It's a lot of work. It's pretty rough, really old. It's not as strong of a shell as we had anticipated it to be, but anyway, we'll talk more about that in a sec. First, Drew and I gotta eat something. 
Found myself an old steel military hat. I might need this during construction. <laughs> Reporting for breakfast. I love it. One scoop of vanilla protein powder. Cinnamon. Heavy hand of cinnamon. You can never have too much. Give you some too. Ding. I have to ask you a really important question. Okay. Did you coordinate your clothing to match the <gasps> colors of the berries? Oh, it's very, uh, you know. It's very berry. You are what you eat. <laughs> Though there's no linen or cotton in here. <laughs> How's it look? My protein powder gives it this like really fluffy consistency. Taste test? Oh yeah. Hmm. Who else eats things off their spoon like that? Mmm. <laughs> My favorite. Fabulous. Ooh. Tooth freeze. Sensitive teeth. <laughs> Still worth it. We'll let you enjoy this. You know who we're finally gonna use? Our little teddy bear honey from France. <laughs> We've had this since our honeymoon six years ago. We actually slept on this bee farm. Apiary. Honey for my honey. Shall we? Let's do it. Let's go. To the bus. <laughs> Watch out for that tumbleweed. <laughs> They're everywhere. Well, first, I guess we should explain a little bit about this facade here. This bus has been situated on some guy's land for eons. This bus has not moved in a long time. These are the good old cowboy days. There's a bunch of old horseshoes out here. Look at this. Even a set of spurs. Cool. Isn't that cool? And look at all these bullet shells, the casings. Whoa. State of Idaho, Department of Highways. An old canteen. And these are the flingers right here. We could get you shooting, babes. What's a flinger? You put the clay pigeon in there and you go. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Let me grab one of these clay pigeons right here. Oh, I thought it was going to look like a pigeon. Ready for this? Who else thought this was going to look like a pigeon? Did it go so? Oh. Well, whoever owned this bus originally was definitely a cowboy. He's even got some white leather boots over there to prove it. I actually think this shade structure was actually pretty brilliant because a metal bus out here would get so hot with the sun baking on it all the time. Plus it's pretty fun, you know? It looks like a little tiny house, but I sort of think the bus needs to come out of its shell. As an Airbnb, I would love seeing an old vintage bus, you know, that I get to sleep in. There's something so fun about that. With proper insulation, of course. Real quick, I just want to reiterate that Brittany and I are not the ones funding this project and that we are the creative minds and hands that are going to potentially be doing this project. And look at this. We have like a normal house door. Yeah, they fabricated wooden doors onto the bus. Oh, and look at that. The original yellow coach emblem, even though the bus is silver. Da 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 inside the bus. Right here is actually where the front seats are. Yep, the driver would be sitting right there. You can still see the windshield wipers on the outside. If we were to turn this into an Airbnb, I would want to make that a bay window, like a nice little couch cushiony area and really highlight and accentuate the giant windows because that's where the view is. You know, it's like a big screen TV, but better. But here is the rest of the bus. You could sort of see it behind me earlier, but it's a lot of space and there's a lot of junk that needs to be removed. These right here, I mean, look at these. These are stick welders. This guy was like a fabricator, engineer, builder. He did all sorts of cool projects around here and this is where he stored it all. Little sleigh bell. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he built his own house over here on his own. And so he needed all of this stuff. But now I think there's somebody else who's about to buy this property. Not 100% sure, but this bus has got to go. These tools got to go. And well, Drew and I are wondering if we're the ones for the job. And because Garrett of the Bucket List family's friend reached out to us about this idea and we decided it's an open door. Why not go check it out? Here we are. The biggest question though still is about the property. Is the property actually ready for us? He was prepared for hot days. I mean, the heat is another huge concern for this project. You can see here, these are the old lights for each passenger when there was actual seating with the lamp style pull chains. 
Zero insulation, might yeah. I add. Yeah. From what we know is this was a 1950s Bible camp bus. So there were kids on here probably yelling and screaming and just having an exciting time going off to camp. I think they were all reading their Bibles. I think they were very well-behaved children. We are in Utah, which is a very Mormon type of community yeah. here. So it makes a lot of sense. I actually really like how he organized his nuts and bolts at the other end down there. Every man needs to organize his nuts and bolts, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I mean, there are countless five gallon buckets of just not bolts and not nuts, nails. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking the bed should go back there where the nuts and bolts were, all right? <laughs> Come in. Oh, this must be for the chipmunks. <laughs> or for you. Let's do a width check. Looks about 90 inches wide. That's what we're working with. I'm at the floor here. Okay, let me mark the floor. We're at 25 feet. So basically this is what the footprint or the floor plan for the bus allows. And right there, we got four more feet to work with. So in total, that's 29 feet to work with by seven and a half feet wide. That's two lengths of spirit, because spirit, we have 14 feet. Wow. Huh. huh. Ooh, but the one thing they still haven't seen yet is like the entire side of the bus, because on the other side of this box shade structure situation is only one sided. Let's take you to the other side. But one more thing in here we haven't shown them. What? Look right here. Ew. These are little chipmunk droppings. So it was a chipmunk door. Yeah. But it's not doing a very good job. Alvin? Theodore? Simon? <laughs> so we want to know, would you guys take on this project? Yeah, what do you think? Leave us a comment below. But, I mean, besides just the bus being a structure that we could convert into a glamping Airbnb, there are a lot more questions and situations that we've recently learned about that come into play on our decision as to whether or not to take this on right now. Watch out for the bullet shell and the balls. And look. Wanted to show you guys, they've kind of knocked out one of the planks and you can see the original spare tire. The hope with getting this bus out of here is that we could get it free of the structure, free of the concrete slab, get it onto a flatbed truck and haul it out of here. Look right here how slick these tires are. This means this bus was really driven a long ways. But right there's that cement we got to chip away. Whew. It goes back far. Seems like a project if you talk to me. And we wouldn't even get to live in it after, but yeah, we'd get to in the future some. Part of the agreement is that we could stay in it a few days every year, which means that regardless of where we purchase land, we would have a little piece of home, at least for a few weeks every single year here, which would be pretty cool. The day will come for this bus to bust out of its shell. Move it to its new home. But that's not gonna be right now. And we have a few reasons to tell you why this Airbnb glamping renovation project is- Here, put it on hold. Yeah, I'm pressing that pause button. But let's put you up on a pole or something because my arm is gonna get real tired of holding this camera. <laughs> there we go. <sighs> so nice under the shade right now. It is. <laughs> but first off, we wanna let you guys know that in order to get this bus project started, what it requires is literally busting it out of the concrete. Which would need to be done after removing the shade structure. And operating a jackhammer in the heat of a Moab summer sun might actually be the end of us. Even the way the cement was poured, like wedges up around the tires. But this property that we're on right now, because they like to keep it very private and they do entertain guests here from time to time in the home, we're only allowed to be here for like a couple days at a time yeah. and then not be here for a lot of weeks. Which is really difficult when we have a van without air conditioning in this kind of climate. Oh. It also makes it hard for us because we're just the type that like, once we're on it, we are on it. I mean, that's YouTube life, you know? We have a series to continue yeah. with. You don't want to see us like move out some of the bolts and canisters with all of the tools, but then we got to take a break. We just want wham, bam, week <laughs> one, two, three, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And it's done, and you can come stay in it because needing to do all of this heavy lifting in the heat of the summer honestly sounds sort of like a death wish yeah because we wouldn't be living in air conditioning yeah if you look at the climate to this region throughout the summer months 
the average temperature is at least 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And the nights don't even really cool down that much. By 9 a.m. this morning, it's sweltering in our van already. And if you guys have been following us for the years, we've learned to be snowbirds. We just like making smart decisions so that we're not suffering because in van life, we are at the mercy of the elements. Our comfort, everything depends on the environment we choose to be in. And on that one property that you saw us share with you in our past episode, where there was an airplane hangar that we could potentially be renovating the bus in and maybe living in the extra studio that had a shower and stuff, we never got to see inside of it. And the owner of that property still hasn't totally agreed to the project being done there. Yeah, so there's kind of a couple open-ended strings that needed to be tied and we're still waiting on Josh to come forward with a couple decisions that have been made. And I think with all that said, we Why have not? to make up some other plans. Wait, yeah. yeah. I think that they need more time before we hop on in here and yeah. just kind of do what we do. You guys had seen, we got that text message. We drove here to scout it out. We thought this was gonna happen right away, but after kind of looking at it all, maybe the time is just not right and that time is not now. <laughs> I'm not sure he was like expecting us to be so on board and gung-ho, yeah. but that is just how we are. <laughs> and also, the sooner we were to get this project done with, that meant the sooner we could pursue our own land, you know, continue yeah. that next chapter. But we're sort of like- Wink, wink. You what? might have an idea of some places we like in this world. So stay tuned for our next episode because we will be revealing a lot more exciting yeah. things that we probably shouldn't talk anymore oh, about right and now. And we have some really exciting people we're going to be spending time with. That's right. Thank you for joining us for what has been slightly a little <laughs> whirlwind in between. Yeah. You know, we were like, oh, Baja. Now what? Is it transition period? Yeah. Utah, SoCal. Dome. Portugal. Dome life. Yeah. yeah. What do we do next? Anyway. So this may happen in the future. We're letting Josh and the bus people know that yeah. if you guys are ready for us, when we come back from our next excursion here, we'll be ready to build this out because how much fun would it be to create something that you guys could stay yeah. in, in America? One of the things that we want most is to be able to give an opportunity for others to experience some of the stuff we've experienced and enjoy the outdoors with something that we've hand built. Yep, and it's a very beautiful place out here. Although it's sweltering hot and this is like the height of season, the yeah. hottest weather is when the most people are here and that's when Drew and I get the cue to kind of get out of town. <laughs> it's crowded and it's hot. Where do we go? We hang out in the dugout. <laughs> All right, guys, we love you, and we'll see you soon. We'll see you guys very soon. For a very exciting next episode. Should I go show you how that swing thing contraption, the automated one, works? Let's get you flying a clay pigeon. Do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> see you guys next time. Here you go, babes. You know what that is? Now I do. It's clay pigeon. So set it right on the base of that contraption, That's right hard. there. I already got it loaded for you. Mm. So now stand back over here by these little flowers. Okay. And pull that cord. There's two. Pull them. Ready to rip. Let her Ooh. go, send it. <laughs> <laughs> My pigeon survived. <laughs> Foul ball. Did you expect it to go in that direction? No, it was supposed to go straight over to the left. She lives. <laughs> Good, we can recycle it. You want to put it back in the box? Sure. Yeah. Put it back with all the other chickens? Let's put it back with the other. <laughs> I guess friend. pigeons, not chickens. <laughs> this one was, you know, robust pigeon. <laughs> Resilient pigeon. Here you go. Good night. I can't believe that one survived. <laughs> that doesn't happen often, I'm sure. That never happens. You don't take a pigeon out so that a pigeon can survive. You <laughs> break the pigeon. You send it home, back to the dirt. Leave it to me.